Hey, Brad? Man, these are a lot less funny than I remember. Doctor, doctor! What? There's a new patient that needs an autopsy performed. Okay, first up, that door is supposed to open outwards and you broke it. Second, it's my lunch break. Now let me watch Family Guy. But sir, it's urgent. If we don't dissect the body today, it won't be trendy anymore. Just get another pathologist to do it or something. I'm clearly busy. <sighs> Please, sir, you're the best we got. It'll take like a minimum of 10 minutes. We need to get that ad revenue anyway. Uh, fine. But it better be easy. I... I need a beer or something. It's too early to deal with this shit. What do you mean, sir? It's noon. That, that's, that's not what I meant. I mean, like, why am I performing surgery on the imposter from that goofy op bean game? Well, everyone wants to know how it died. You even forgot to remove the PNG background. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What do you mean I did this? I did it. I'm sorry. Also, I... I thought it was pretty obvious why Among Us died in the first place. Wait, really? And here we are now. This video goes out to anybody who's experienced something similar to that skit before. Hey everyone, I'm Red Woods, and I'm here on YouTube to talk about things that nobody asked me to give my take on. It's kind of weird in retrospect to think about how fast Among Us went from being a cultural icon to an ironic meme. If you were born before 2018, you probably have some memories playing Among Us with a group of friends as the virus lingered. If you were born after 2018, go back to Poppy's Playtime or something. The curly drawn bean game was inescapable. In late September of 2020, the most popular time for Among Us by far, videos relating to the game reached a total of 4.5 billion views. To put that into perspective, my channel has zero. It invaded streaming culture too. In October of the same year, it would reach a staggering peak of 775,000 viewers. And a lot of notable streamers would play it frequently like Toast, XQC, Pokimane, Ninja, Mr. Beast. And two politicians. Remember when Ocasio-Cortez played the game? I vaguely do. 2020 was insane. Despite how huge it was, looking back, it seems as if the game became unpopular right when 2021 hit. People even noticed this huge decline back then and seemed to get tired of it as the meme slowly transitioned to making fun of the trend rather than supporting it. Now that the game is dead and has been for two years, the big question changed from how it died to how it lived as well and how it continues to live. Wow, that was oddly emotional for talking about Among Us. To cover the full history of Among Us to the modern day, let's start at the beginning. Because that's how time works. Among Us was released on June 15th, 2018. Inspired by the actual party game Mafia, the Intersloth dev team wanted to code an experience you could play locally with your friends. Heh, <laughs> if only I had those. The game was originally very small. In fact, Intersloth thought it would be a failure. You could say they thought the game would get ejected. Why, why would I write that? Despite this, countries that weren't America enjoyed it enough to keep it alive. Brazil was by far the pre-lockdown hotspot of Among Us before it took off in other places. One of the most widely searched Among Us terms worldwide before the game blew up was Como Jogar Among Us, which is how to play Among Us in Portuguese. Sorry for slaughtering the pronunciation, by the way. Later on, however, something huge would happen. In March of 2020, I made a sandwich and lockdown started in America too. Once this happened, people wanted to not be bored, and they found this comfort in video games. On average, spending on gaming increased by 36% globally. And because of this, a certain game with characters that looked like beans was able to take the spotlight in the summer of 2020. And that would be Fall Guys. Fall Guys was a wacky and casual game released on August 4th, 2020. Based on those fun Japanese game shows, it quickly took center stage due to how accessible it was to people who don't usually game. It was simple, it was intuitive, it was fun. I have a lot of vivid memories fighting with my friends to see who could get the most crowns. The problem was, I sucked, and I only had 8 wins while my friend had 85, and honestly, I'm not sure which is more embarrassing. However, just like the game's theme song says, everybody has to fall. Fall Guys fell off immediately at the end of August for a variety of reasons. The game got stale after a while, who would have guessed playing the same maps with clunky mechanics gets old. Exploiters also invaded the game, making it annoying to play and ruining the enjoyment for everyone. But the largest connection to the fall of Fall Guys is the... Among of Among Us. Sorry, that worked way better in my head. You can immediately see that once the issues with Fall Guys were clear and Among Us entered the internet, there was a suspiciously large dip in Fall Guys fans. Huh. Wonder if those are related. By all means, Among Us was essentially just a better Fall Guys, and it picked up clout at an eerily perfect time. The similarities between them are kind of scary when you start to notice them. Most importantly, they both involve beans. But honestly, Among Us has everything Fall Guys does and more. It's just as intuitive. Everyone knows how to play werewolf type games, and if you don't, it can be explained in a few sentences. Since it started as a mobile game, the controls are also easier to understand for newbies. The goals in both were simple too. And Fall Guys, in the good game modes at least, <coughs> you just run to the end. In Among Us, it's even easier because it never changes. If you're the imposter, you try and kill everyone and stay undetected. If you're innocent, you try and find the imposter to vote them out. As I was researching, or to be honest, scrolling through Wikipedia, 
I started wondering how Among Us killed Fall Guys when Among Us has less variability. Really, the only things that change match to match are the map and the tasks. But then, the answer hit me. Square in the forehead, and I needed to go to the hospital. I had recovered, fortunately, but because I'm American, my bank account didn't. However, you can support me and my crippling debt by hitting the like and subscribe button if you've enjoyed so far. Listen, I didn't want to have to beg either, but if you want any engagement on your content nowadays, you kind of need to remind people. I appreciate it. Anyways, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, stupid bean game. The one thing that really set Among Us and Fall Guys apart is that Among Us is a party game. The entire structure of Fall Guys was to be a battle royale. This means that only one person can win, and it's better to go off alone than work with others. Actually, the game wants you to do this. That's why grabbing and pushing are at the core of the Fall Guys experience. Hey, you know what also gets annoying after a while? Grabbing and pushing! This means that playing it and streaming it with friends, while fun, wasn't as fun as it could be. Even if you played in duos or squads, you didn't get to work with your teammates in a lot of game modes. And the teams and team games were randomly assigned, so like... What was the point? Among Us, on the other hand, relies on social interaction. Your entire experience depends on the people who are a part of it, and the developers knew this. The game itself is as basic as Fall Guys when you really look at it, but the dynamics between people accusing and helping and killing each other is just so central to it. Also, people love to watch others scream and laugh at their friends. Streaming it was so fresh and entertaining. Fall Guys never took advantage of something like that. Due to this, the trend began, and god fucking damn did it take off. It got so popular that the term sus was added to the dictionary last year. Considering how modern it is, I really don't need to go in depth on how popular it got. Also, because you clicked on the video in the first place, I assume you already know. How could I forget the trend, really, considering I dressed as an Among Us crewmate for Halloween in 2020? Yeah, I admit it. Don't act like you wouldn't do the same as a 14-year-old. Through September and October, it skyrocketed to its maximum popularity but it took an aggressive plummet when November started. December continued the downward trend with a spike around Christmas for the winter update, and the new year would see a plummet further before equalizing into popularity way below its prime. It just makes you wonder why. I'm absolutely not the first person to analyze this question, I absolutely won't be the last, but it still interests me for some reason. And through my scholarly research, I found three main reasons why the game fell off so hard. Dun, dun. Being completely real, the success of Among Us was based on people being bored and not able to meet up. To many, Among Us was a way to connect with people while we were stuck at home. So what happens when we aren't anymore? The vaccine started to be developed and restrictions led up around this point in time and people were finding better things to do with their life. I remember around the start of 2021, if you wore a mask, you were able to go into school every other day, which was the official end of online learning for me because I wanted to socialize, damn it. Without a motive for people to play a game, why would they? Mm -hmm. Looking through Steam discussions, people really started to dislike the changes in our sloth were making to the game later on. One of the most hated features they added was Quick Chat. Added in February of 2021, it restricted anyone under the age of 13 or without an account from using the standard chat system by being limited to predetermined responses. Along with some art changes, glitches, or bugs, and sometimes even just a lack of interesting updates, the team behind the game just seemed to not be accustomed to long-term updates. Can you blame them though? Absolutely not. They were not accustomed to this level of attention. Henry Stickman was successful, but not chart-topping, and they shouldn't be held accountable for fans not liking the stuff they did. But it still is a reason the game declined, and it can't be ignored. <laughs> I saved this one for last because it's by far the biggest reason. Even when the virus ended or bad updates were made, nothing would have killed it harder than its fundamental design. Simple games are appealing, especially when it comes to trends. It's intuitive, it's satisfying, I just went on the same rant like a couple minutes ago, but basic games attract basic attention spans. In a simple game like Among Us or Fall Guys, the goals are short term and never change. If you don't give your fans long term goals or shake up the format all too much, you're gonna lose them to a game that rattles the keys in front of them later, like Poppy's Playtime. I hate modern indie horror. Also, one of the the only things that really shook up the game was the social interaction part of it, but people started to take note of the common strategies or mannerisms that their friends had. Also, certain tactics to win as the imposters spread through the internet, which made it even easier to identify them. Once the dust settled, the game became predictable, which I think was the nail in the coffin. I think this tragedy requires a proper funeral, so I dug a hole outside and buried the Among Us symbolically. May he rest in peace, and hopefully compost well. Once Among Us was out of the picture, this allowed other games like Friday Night Funkin' to take its place.
Now that I had more of an interest in being honest. Among Us made its mark, but Friday Night Funkin' stuck with me for longer and I just found it more fun. Friday Night Funkin' didn't contribute to killing Among Us, it kinda just filled the trend vacuum after it left. In my opinion, Friday Night Funkin', while not being nearly as popular, was meant to last longer. It's a lot easier to remix the game and make it fresh. There was a whole world of possibilities of variety other trendy games can only hope to have. This means Friday Night Funkin', while certainly dead and probably deserving of it, is still relevant nowadays, but so is Among Us. Which brings me to my final point. Meme culture was forever ruined, I mean, changed by Among Us. The only way Among Us had left its mark on the world today before dying was by giving us really stupid memes. Originally, Among Us memes used to just be memes about Among Us. The gameplay, the fandom, whatever, and being honest, they were completely ass. Like, the majority were eye funny levels of horrible. But once the game started dying, the memes became ironic. And this is where everything took off. One of the first and most notable ironic usages was Amogus gaining popularity, which was used to bastardize, didn't know that was a word, comics made by the right-wing artist Stone Toss. If you don't know who that is, keep it that way. Even people who didn't know the context, however, will recognize this image that came from the meme. Another one that was commonly used was When the Imposter is Sus, which was made pretty early on. One of the most interesting memes, in my opinion, is Stop Posting About Among Us. Created in March of 2021, during the height of Among Us' death, this marks one of the first really popular memes that actively insults Among Us. I feel like the real sad thing, however, is that Among Us had a spike in popularity on April Fool's Day, which I, I think just really shows you where it's at. It may be gone, but it definitely won't be forgotten, which probably isn't for the best, to be honest. Well, there it is. For sitting through the entire history of Among Us, you officially have a larger attention span than most of its fan base. Thanks for sticking around anyway. I'm glad you found this video enjoyable enough to watch until the end. If you want to support my future videos I plan on uploading every week or every other week, make sure to like, subscribe, comment, whatever. Or if you absolutely hate me and want me to kill myself, don't forget to comment that too, because I know you will. I mostly plan on making commentary content similar to this video about mainstream or popular media, so if you're interested in that, stick around. Unless you're like below the age of 12, in which case, honestly, why the fuck are you still here? On that note, I'll be happy to see all 10 of you in my next video. See you guys later. Peace.